we are here for giving a small demonstration on the Selenium with Java. And I'm having eight plus years of experience into industry. And below is my list of expertise, or I would not say expertise, but yeah, below is my list of knowledge that I have for different tools, different things. So just to brief you about some of the things, uh, let's talk about mobile and web automation. So I am working on Selenium APM for Factor, Robot Framework, Web Driver IO was the last year, but yeah, not this year, XUITF and Cypress. These are things that are currently in the main domain that I'm currently working upon. I'm having multiple projects, right? so that's in my expertise right now. I'm talking about the API automation. So we have different tools out there and different jars. So rest assured with Java I've worked upon, SOAP UI and Postman for the automation. And team, since I don't know if you have heard about RP or not, so recently there are some technologies being developed in robotics, right? So I am trying my hands on over there as well. So working on UI path and the prism. Since the concepts are same, just trying to learn something new over there. Having certified training over there as well. And team, along with that, there's some tools that I've worked upon, Perfecto, Sauce You can have a read about it here. Like everything that I've experienced upon. I think from my experience, I can help you out to give some knowledge. Because this experience has come from certain years of experience, right? So I can help you with all that domain knowledge so that you could go further and work further in your organization. I think once we are completed the training, I wouldn't say like once you're completed, but I would say once you're in the middle of the training as well, if you want to crack some interview, then I think with those real concepts, you'll be able to crack some interview. And team just talking about some certifications, so I'm like Safe Agile member, CSM certified, PMP, ITL. Recently, I just completed my AWS architect certificate as well. And I'm UiPath practitioner. As I can wait, I'm just starting it out here. So I'm UiPath practitioner as well. So team, that was a little bit about my certifications and my knowledge. So team, today's agenda is some like this. So first of all, we'll talk about Selenium as a career. Okay, so what about Selenium? Why are we doing Selenium? Because there are multiple automation things out there that could help us doing automation different kind of things. So why are we choosing exactly Selenium? What's the architecture of Selenium? Selenium versus other tools. How can we compare Selenium with other tools? What are the advantages? What are the pros and cons? So we'll be looking at all those points. And team, before that I go to those points, I would like to give you a brief what exactly you will be going through the curriculum in this course. So these are some of the points. Team, additionally, they are having my, uh, my very good details in it. So these are only the bullet points that are put out there for you. But yes, and in addition to that, we have many more points that uh, already have been conveyed to you. But yeah, just to give a brief again, team, we, I'll tell you about Selenium. Why do we need to do automation? The components of Selenium. Then configuration, how do I need to configure my Selenium ID? How do I need to configure my Selenium Eclipse with Java? So as it should work with Selenium. What I believe is that before moving to Selenium, we should even know some basic concepts of Java. I know I think you might be knowing some concepts of Java, but what I feel is that we should go and revise Java first. And we should learn Java first, then only we should move forward. Because everything that you'll be seeing in Selenium will be based on Java. Okay, so we'll be seeing some concepts of conditional statements, loop statements, array, exception, error handling. Then hoops concept, that's the main thing out there. Polymorphism, inheritance, interfaces, encapsulation, abstraction, and packages. And team, I think there are many more minute details that I've probably mentioned over here. But yes, once I'll be going through the course, you'll be seeing all of those things. Next thing is the main important thing, that's called Selenium Web Driver. That's the thing on which the whole testing or the whole Selenium is based upon. Then we'll look into some frameworks because we need to do something, right? So we'll be seeing some data-driven framework and page object model framework. Then how to handle windows. Automation life cycle, then even Jenkins at the very end. That's the main priority. So team will help you to start from scratch from Java, then going till the end. That's the delivery of the project to CI CD five times. That's our scope and that's our curriculum. And I think much more details have been already handed over to you. So team, that was the curriculum that you have to go through. Now going to my topic that we to discuss. Okay team, so before I proceed, usually if you know like what I proceed is with, I just take some opinions. I just try to get some opinion from people that exactly why do you need automation. So team, right now since it's a demo, so let me just give a brief out here. We are doing automation, right? But have you ever thought what's the reason of doing automation? Have you ever given an idea why exactly we're doing automation? Let's hear some of the points that might be helpful for you to identify the root cause of why have you moved towards automation. What's the main advantage that many people are moving out there to automation? There are instances at times since you are from the testing industry, testing background, you might have seen some instances that you are doing the same monotonous thing every time, like day and night, the same thing. I think for many years also you might have been doing the same thing again and again. What people have seen is that 
doing the same job again and again doesn't give us fruitful result doesn't give us any fruitful answer because what happens is most of the time we try to just spend some time in which a thing that is already known to someone that won't even cause a defect to us so what we have done is now we have automated that thing so that we should not waste, waste much time so all the positive test scenarios will be tested by a robot that's called selenium out here but at the later end what will happen for us is we'll focus our time in doing an ad of this thing that will help us in getting some new defect will help us in getting some newer issues that could be helpful for the application because till now we are not having much time to do that ad hoc testing because we are much more focused on positive test cases now since the positive test cases will be handled by something called as robot or the selenium so now we have a ample amount of time that we could invest at our end and go for the automation so that we could focus on ad hoc testing team again we will be looking at the very much more points during the actual sessions but again so team people are moving towards selenium and if you know i don't know if you all know about it or not selenium has been there in the market from last two like since 2000 80 and it's 2020 today and it's still in demand even the resumes out there even the jds that are coming out there who are looking like the companies who are looking for some candidates they're still posting out that they need a person who has selenium skill they need a person who can develop a selenium framework so all these things need to be taken care of team selenium is still in market it won't go anywhere for next few years again it won't go away anywhere for few years again now let's talk about selenium as a career why are we shifting to selenium right what's the reason to shift shift towards selenium if you see the results the number of jobs that have been catered or the number of jobs that have been provided to different people out there in the market a manual tester will have less number of options to shift but a person who has selenium skills that will be having much more options because he can work either in the automation industry as well as in the manual industry so that's an added advantage and that's the reason team people are putting out a requirement that you should have knowledge of manual testing as well as automation and looking at automation there are many tools but selenium is the best tool because it's an open source and you can learn many things and now to see uh, see something once you work into automation team what positions you could go to so basically we start from qa engineer then might be we might move to selenium automation analyst then quality engineer senior test engineer automation test lead these are different positions that you might see out there whenever you are going into going for working into automation industry or in a qa industry so you might get any of these roles with depending on your experiences so that again depends like what knowledge do you have what experience skills you have what skill set do you have are you able to develop a framework or are you able to develop a selenium scripts so all those things decide your particular future career and team the main thing that we usually work for is our salary right so if i talk about salary that's the best part to talk about because anyone can see a good amount of salary being credited to your account once you are into automation industry as compared to a person who has manual skills other so again team i would recommend this thing for your future go ahead with this training go ahead and just learn it and just put out in your resume and you see the jump in your career now we should know something about the selenium architecture that in selenium is something people usually call this selenium as a tool but i would say team selenium is not a tool but it's a collection of selenium java jar file it's a collection of jar files that is that has been developed which helps you to use some of the functionalities to do some automation on the website it is a collection of jar that helps you to provide some kind of automation on the website so team going a little bit past over here studying into selenium architecture usually when this was developed in the initial years they developed as a ide not a selenium jar but they developed it as an ide ide is nothing but team it's a selenium integrated development environment just as you see like eclipse right what is it it's an ide for you where you could just write your code in a similar fashion team it's an integrated development environment where you don't need to write any kind of code it's everything over there is recorded here i'll be telling you how to work with it once you go into session everything will be shown to you in detail but initially when it started it started with selenium ide there was some challenges they faced and what were those challenges this was a tool that was not much helpful in certain conditions like exception handling working out with reporting they were not able to give much more proper reporting out there much information was not able to deliver it out there at times we had to put in some tweaks right which could be easily possible in writing code whenever we write some code we can tweak it right but whenever we work in selenium id we don't have that capability with us we have to go what is designed there anyhow it's a very good tool it's a very good thing that we don't need to write any scripts just record and play it will work fine fantastically for you but again it it has some restriction and due to that what happened a new thing was born that was called selenium rc and selenium rc stands for remote control so team since i told you there were some disadvantages since you're not able to write some code out here so it was no code but team once you moved out here what happened we had the option of coding with us we were able to code down there in selenium rc what was the thing they used to 
interact with the Chrome browser or any kind of browser but in order to interact with them they had to switch on a remote control server they had to switch on a remote control server with the help of javascript code a small javascript code was used to place inside the browser and the remote control server was made to on then only our selenium our java code and our browser were able to interact because how can a chrome browser interact with the java how will it get to know that hey this java code needs to work on this chrome browser so this remote control server was helping in sending out that particular code from iclips id or any id to the chrome browser which was helping us in interacting but again team you all know it whenever we start learning something we start improvising it so when they saw this thing that we need to do some addition steps out there that's called putting the remote server on right putting some additional code into the chrome browser with the javascript help so again they saw that okay there's an issue we need to remove this after this team after few suggestions after few complications they came up with web driver that's the best thing they came up with that's the best thing that we have in market till now so they develop a concept called as web driver it's basically an interface so they develop this thing in which the users didn't have to switch on anything no remote server no control separately no need to put any javascript code into the browser nothing at all now i have removed the middle steps now my java code could directly interact with the chrome browser or any kind of browser you say i think there are multiple browsers in the market like chrome browser internet explorer browser safari opera mozilla firefox and n number of browsers right team so different kind of third parties are provided the web drivers which could help us in interacting with them but this could not easily work out so what they had done is they had merged this so team over there we had some few revisions out there which led to selenium 2 and selenium 3 so recently team this is the most recent one that we are using out here and the most recent version that the version that we are using is 3.1459 141 not 59 that's the most recent version that we are using out there in the market and even about i'll talk about some newer version that they are in the market but that will just confuse in a while but there's a new version that has been developed that's called selenium alpha 4.0 it's still in the testing phase it's not yet released properly to everyone and not much customers are working on it but yeah people are doing some alpha testing on it right now just the difference between selenium 3 and selenium 4 is that it was having eight locators now that's having 10 locators and some additional differences you see but if that's again in alpha mode and you all know that once testing is there in alpha mode we should stop right we should not use it into our project and then the last component i think these two components are the major components these two web driver clean and grid clean and grid is one of the component team that could help you to perform parallel execution and team performing parallel execution is one of the great task i think that we have given us because if you could just relate this thing to your manual testing whenever you try to test something right whenever you try to see something as a product you don't just test it on a particular browser you just don't test it on a particular mobile phone you try to just increase the scope of this right you just try to go on different browser like mozilla internet chrome browser multiple browsers out there and even if you are testing on the uh, mobile application as well you try to use different os versions different brands different models right so team this thing has given an option that we could perform same test case written only once can be tested on multiple machines can be tested on multiple browsers and that too simultaneously that's called parallel testing over here so team this thing has given an added advantage for saving time because previously what used to happen first we used to test in chrome browser once the test used to get over then we used to shift to internet explorer then that used to get over then we used to shift on mozilla but now team all three tests could be done simultaneously that could save a lot of time and could help us in uh, closing the testing cycle life cycle quickly there are many more advantages team that will be discussed with you once you land into the ideal sessions whenever we are going to automation right we have multiple tools out there in the market we have multiple tools that give us the same option that give us the same liability that give us the same helpers i think helper function that could help us in automating any kind of website so team there is a small comparison that i'll be bringing in front of you there are some tools that are all that were already there in the market before even selenium was there so now team just want to give you a comparison how these tools are different and now in the future standard tools so team there i think if you have heard or not there is a tool tool called Cat- catalon studio it has also come up in the market but yes it has not got that much importance till now it will take some time so let's talk about these three tools it's hp qtp tool that quick test quick test profession that is ibm proprietary tool rft then it's called selenium the first of all the most important thing is whenever company starts to work they try to look out for something that's cheap that's free but they don't have to pay for license because they are already paying for the employees 
and already the employees cost are so much right they don't want to waste like input some more money on the license cost the selenium over here is one of the free chart files that you could just take it and just work up on it it's an open source even the source code is available you can just take the code tweak the code and make it as your own doesn't matter it's open source library what if you talk about hpqtp and ipmrft it's license tool and not only license team it's seek license tool the number of persons that are working on this will require multiple licenses for us now team over here if i talk about the cost this is clearly high and high because you have to pay the license cost right whenever license cost is there that will be incurred for me and let's say if i'm having 10 employees 10 into per license cost right so that will be 10 into 10 100 I mean, but it's depending. It's increasing from, but over here, it's zero. Only the employee cost is there. Everything is free for you. Customer support, I would say they have specific company support, right? You have to come if you purchase the license. They give a particular support for you. But team over here, we have an open community support. Just ping in a doubt. Just enter your question out there in the market. There are multiple websites that could help you out there. Just enter your question. Like within a span of few seconds, we'll get your answer. There will be multiple people that will be help uh, out there to help you out with different ideas. And then I would say coding experience is required for sure. I won't deny that, but not that much. Usually people say that okay, I don't know coding, I can't go for automation. But then going for automation and working with Java language or any other language is not difficult because automation requires not that kind of coding. Like I don't need to go to advanced level, but just yet. The core level of coding is required that could help us in doing some kind of automation. Environment support. So this is the only for Windows. It's only for Windows, but over here it's all for Windows, Linux, Solaris OS. Again, the for Mac OS. So multiple OS is supported out here. That's giving an added advantage over here. And the best thing that I like seeing over here is multiple languages. Yes, of course, Java, C sharp, Ruby, Python, Perl, PHP, and JavaScript. You see. Multiple languages support even people working working on these languages. They could easily shift and start working on it. That's the best part. But the thing out here is it supports only VB script and Java and C sharp. So again, if you just see, I believe that anything that's costing you free, first of all, that's the main point. Anything that's offering you multiple languages, that's the main point, right? What's the final cost from it? How much coding is required? So, team, looking at these three things, I think that's the reason people are moving towards Linux. Previously, people are working on HTTP, uh, HTTP, but now they are again moving towards Linux. Again, I would say this thing: Linux is the tool that's out there in the market, and that that will be out there in the market of future as well. So I think, I think we have done the best part out here by enrolling in this course. This will help you a lot. Now, team, once we go over at the end, very end, when we deliver the session for you, I'll be showing you some samples. Usually, we'll be getting them also, and I'll be showing you some exact environment related samples in which. You will be seeing the related actual work. How does the code look like? How does everything look like? And we will even create a framework. So we'll use the e-com script right? through which that particular website will be used by us to create a particular framework. Both e-mail and framework. Some framework are a hybrid driven framework. So I tell you what exactly it is. So then everything like I think once you enter it, once you enter that man mat is right. Training you from the very basic thing and taking to your the pro level. I think that's where you can design your framework. I think that's I think that's the way every student out there can do so. So we'll help you with all that stuff. I think this is something that we'll be helping you while you are enrolling the session. So we'll help you uh, set up your system because we need some basic requirements. So we need uh, particularly to install Eclipse and Selenium Jars. So we'll be helping you to install all the stuff on a system that would be helpful for you so that you could start coding. All these things I think a particular day will be assigned to us and then we'll be setting up our system. So don't need to worry. We'll be helping you out in each and everything. And at the end, team, what will be happening? Of at the end of every session, you'll be getting some recorded sessions too. So, whatever thing I'm doing in the class, you'll be getting the recorded sessions. And if by chance you miss some of the sessions, you'll even get the recorded videos, right? So whenever you have time, you can just go through recorded videos. You'll have some documentation that will be given to you, some useful references, some important links that would be helpful for you. Some sample resumes will be delivered to you, and even I'll also help you in developing your resume. Some guidance, some proper keywords that would be entered in your resume. Because team, you know, whenever let's take example of Nokri. dot com. Whenever someone searches for a profile on Nokri, what happens? They enter few keywords, and when they enter few keywords, that resume pops up in the list. So I'll help you out 
how can you resume pop up interviews? I'll help you out what exact keywords you should put onto your resume. That could be helpful for you to get a job or get at least a call from Locky.com. That could be helpful for you to crack for them. So again, do like at the end, do you have any questions for me that you would like to discuss? Anything that you would need to discuss with me regarding course timing, resource allocation, everything will be discussed by Matrix. But yes, anything related to subject, you could discuss with me with this class. Uh, okay, team. So I think that was all from my side. We had a very good time. If you have any questions, I'm here always to help you out. You can just reach me out anytime you want. We are here to help you. Thank you so much, team, for your time. Thank you so much. Okay, take care, team.